information too. <laughs> That'll give you some information too. Exactly. <laughs> so um, welcome to Contrology Club. So today is a little different than typical because a greater portion of people are going to be watching a recording later. So um, I've had to kind of think of some structure for today that would benefit them since we only have two moving bodies to view, to observe. So today we're going to be focusing on getting back to basics with our two-way stretch and kind of establishing what that means, which we'll do as soon as Hilda gets here, and how we can apply the two-way stretch to make everything we teach in Pilates simpler for both our students and ourselves. So Rona has been with us at Old School Pilates now for about a year and a half, pretty much the entirety of the pandemic. Let's pin her. Okay, wait, hold on. I pinned myself. How do I unpin myself? Remove pin. Okay, so now we see Rona. So Rona has been using her home and um, her mat work. And then she more recently obtained a spine corrector. So she's gonna be showing us her wall series, which she's been doing for quite some time. And as she's doing it, and Rona, you'll just move through your series. I'm not gonna give you any direction, you know your work. And we'll just kind of pick some things to notice about how she's moving and how she's using her apparatus, which is the wall and her weights to find her two-way stretch. Okay. So the wall is such a great place for feedback, right? It's, it's very firm and solid and we can really feel what sort of imbalances might be going on in our body when we're against it. We can tell if we're even, we can tell if we're wonky. Um, it's a great place to end a session, but it's also sometimes a great place to start taking the floor vertically. So in our two-way stretch, when we're at the wall, we wanna be using our lower body reach to push the ground away to help us find length and stability and we want to be able to utilize that lower body reach to help stabilize us in a way that allows for freedom of movement of the upper body. So Rona, as you snake down, push into your feet and push your head up and away to help stretch your body two ways to create more space for each bone of your spine on the way down. Rona, do you mind moving um, the camera over to the, can you put it over, what is that over there, your toilet, <laughs> wherever, whatever's over there so that we can see you. <laughs> is that better? That's good. Okay. So as you side bend, good, okay, you fixed it that second time. You're using your upper body reach to push the wall away to help you find even length on both sides. Okay. 
And the upper body reach starts all the way in your back pockets. So as you're pushing your arms away, remember that your fingertips start all the way in your back pockets and that whole long line of energy from your back pockets up your back, through your shoulders, through your arms and out your hands is all one long connected line. Can you get your hand to flatten on the wall? It's really difficult to stay that way. It is, especially on the pinky side of your hand, right? Uh, like in the palm of my hand. Yeah. Hi, Hilda. So if you wrap your upper arm, that might help you stay connected to the pinky side a little bit more. There you go. Hi. Hi. Okay, so when Rona's done with this, why don't we go over, so Rona, why don't you go over to your mat? Okay. And we're just gonna take a moment. The, today our theme is the two-way stretch. Okay. So we're gonna take a couple minutes to talk about the two-way stretch and then I'll let Rona gets started with her mat workout and you can get started with your reformer workout um, and we can kind of apply the two-way stretch to the workout. Okay, so, I'll take you to the reformer. Perfect, sounds good. Okay, so the mat work is the heart and soul of Pilates, right? And for a lot of people, especially during the pandemic, we're just doing mat work at home on whatever mat we can acquire or some floor or carpet or whatever, what have you. Ideally, and Dr. Pilates intended that the mat work was done on a piece of apparatus called the Pilates mat. And the Pilates mat had a strap, right, for your feet and toys, handles for your hands. And this was intentional to help you find your two-way stretch. So hold on, hold on, before you get started, I want to just talk real quick about the two-way stretch and then, and then you can apply it as you're moving. So oh, let's just do a little exercise and everyone can do that. So just take a seat wherever you are in there and just sit with your legs out in front of you. And sitting like this, and hopefully you can do this on the ground maybe or wherever you want to sit. Take your hands back to your shoulder blades. Okay. So if your legs start all the way up here in your shoulder blades, I want you to follow that long line of energy. Oops, there we go. Okay. So follow that long line of energy from your shoulder blades, down your back, through your butt, up your legs, under your shins, and out your feet. And just do that two more times. So that's your lower body reach. It starts all the way up here, all the way up in your shoulder blades. And your legs start here, and they are connected all the way through your back and all the way through your butt and all the way through your thighs, all the way through your shins, and all the way out through your feet. And then do that one more time. That's the lower body reach. Now, the upper body reach starts down here in your pockets. And it goes from your pockets, up your back, through your shoulders, through your arms, and out your fingertips. From your pockets, up your back, through your shoulders, through your arms, and out your fingertips. Okay, so any time your hands are connected to something, we are using that something to connect our upper body reach all the way into our center of the arm. Right, great. And whenever our legs are connected to something, like a stretch or our springs, we are using that something to connect our lower body all the way into our center. So if you are on this mat, right, this is a great place to find your two way stretch. You have both. You have your lower body reach into the strength. 
you have your upper body reach into your head, then you can use that to pull you to wave out of a strong center. Okay. So, you're going to get started moving. We're going to observe you. And we're going to see as you're moving if you're able to find your two way stretch. And that's going to be our goal today as observers at home watching the recording as we're observing how connected are they to their two way stretch and maybe what could they do to get more connected. All right. Let's get started. So I'm confused. You told me to start on the reformer. So go ahead. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Rona doesn't have a reformer, so she's going to do her math. So Rona has a great connection to her lower body reach. She's kind of made her own Pilates mat at home. She created a strap and she uses her spine corrector for her upper body reach connection. Now, Rona, I'm gonna ask you to do one more roll up because I really loved how connected you were to your lower body reach, but I think we can maybe help you get a little more connection to your upper body reach. So as you reach into that pole, remember your arms connect all the way into your low back. And as you round up and over, that's the part that moves you forward from your low back all the way up into the pole. And one of the ways we know whether or not we're doing that is if as we round forward, we feel our shoulders coming up to our ears, right? Then we've lost the connection between our hands and our back. Good, I think that was better, Rona, but you can do one more for extra credit if you'd like. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Now your shoulders seem more connected into your back. Very nice, okay, beautiful. So now Hilda, she's working on finding her lower body reach, right? Her upper body reach is strong and stable here. And the springs are attached to her feet via the foot bar and up into her center. So this is part of her warm up. So she has to move in a way that helps get the blood flowing. But as she's doing that, she's using those springs to find that length all the way from her shoulder blades down her back, through her seat, through her legs, and into the foot bar. Yeah, so now she's gonna grab her springs with her hands and now her upper body reach connects to them. So her lower body reach stays strong and stable with the muscle memory she just created when her feet were connected to her springs. And she's gonna use the reach into her springs to curl into her upper body reach. And then Hilda, when you're done with your 100, if you could turn the lights on so we could see you a little better, that would be fabulous. Turn what up? The lights. Oh. You know where they are? They're over by the little, um, by the Cadillac. Okay. Hey, Laura, can I turn on the lights, please? Oh, Thank you. I can do it. Perfect. <laughs> Veronica, you get the sunlight behind you. Okay. Thank oh, okay. You. Okay, no worries. Daniela, you're going for a ride. Yeah. Okay. So much better. See, now we have the sunlight working in our favor. That's right. She's all lit up. Can you see her okay? 
So you tilt it up just a tiny bit? Yep. Perfect. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Have fun. Thank you. Okay, so Rona, Jay yes. says that every exercise in the Pilates method is the double leg pull, right? Because it's the epitome of the two-way stretch. So as you curl up, can you keep the curl? So you're strong and connected to your center. Yeah, give your head a rest if you need. So that when you curl up, it's it's a strong and powerful curl. Okay, so curl up, look down at your center to keep your head lifted. And as you find your two-way stretch, keep the scoop, keep the curl. Don't let your upper body reach, pull your head back with you. Oh. All right, keep working on that. Hilda, can you find more two-way stretch on the way in? Reach your head away from your feet and your feet away from your head. Reach your head away from your feet. There, yes. Keep reaching your head away from your feet the whole time. So lift your head up a little bit so it stays connected. There you go. Now imagine I grabbed onto your head and I'm pulling it forwards. Hilda, your lower body reach is looking much more connected here. We worked on this, what was it, Wednesday? Yeah. On the, on the tower. Heels down. Yeah, so helping to keep the heels down to find your lower body reach. I know, I feel my core working harder. There you go. So Rona, see if you can find a little bit more lower body reach. Can you reach your heels away in a way that help? Yes. Yes. That helps you stay connected all the way into your back. So that when you round forward, it's a two way stretch. and pull your belly back into whatever part of your back feels the tightest to help keep the even round shape. So then make sure you're lifting your heels up all the way every single time. Yeah. And use the lift of your heels to help you find your lower body reach. I don't take off a speed, do I? Because you started on three? Yes. There you go. If you started on four, you would have taken off a spring. Tall back. Tall back, yeah.
So your tall back starts all the way at the base of your spine, right? All the way in your back pocket. So how can you use your upper body reach to help you get more lift and length in your tall back? There. So this is a great trick for people that don't have a true Pilates mat with pegs. Rona has a spine corrector at home, but you could also use just a couch or anything solid you can reach into behind you and use it in a way that helps you push away to find your upper body reach to stabilize you for your corkscrew, your single leg circle. Like a wall, maybe? You could use a wall, but I sometimes like, like Rona, the, it, it's nice that Rona has, um, that she can push in rather than just straight back. Or I like a couch or like the base of a bed because you can cup your hands underneath it and still push in a way that helps you access your whole hand. A wall could work. It, it just takes a little bit more strength to be able to use the wall. So a couch to do the stomach massage? No, no, no. Rona was doing the corkscrew on oh, the mat. corkscrew? Yeah. <laughs> so Hilda, take your hand, go back to, to your hands back for a second. Okay, so and, and you have them up on your on your shoulder box and bring the carriage home. Okay, so this is your preparation. This position is your preparation for your reach. So you took your spring off, right? You're on two springs? Yes. Okay, good. So as you reach your arms forward, lift from the base of your spine to the top. So your spine keeps reaching up and forward as your arms go forward, up and forward up and forward, stay up and forward as you come in. Yes, there you go. Up and forward, up and forward, up and forward. Stay up and forward. But then my, it becomes a round shape. Let's see, because I haven't seen it become anything because it, it, it kind of collapsed. Right. So take your arms back again. Take the carriage home. Keep the carriage home all the way in. Okay, now keep the carriage home. It's not home. My carriage is not home. Can you bring it in any further? There you go. Good. No, maybe I should move back. Okay, move back a little bit. Oh yeah. Oh, not that much back. <laughs> oh, I can't move that much back. <laughs> I know it's a lot of work, right? Yes. So add your spring, right? Because you needed that third spring to be able to get the carriage home and with your arms back. Take your arms back. Okay. So this transition of taking off the spring is the transition that challenges you to hold on to your center as you bring your spine up and forward, right? Because you need to come up and forward to take that spring off. So keep your center working and take off your spring. Now, reach your arms, don't take your hand back. Go right from there into your arms reach. Good, stay up and forward. Up and forward, up and forward, good. Press out to get tall. Come in and get taller and taller and taller. Up and forward, up and forward, up and forward. Good. And up and forward. There you go. Now use the help of the spring in your lower body reach to pinch, lift, and grow up and forward. There you go. Yeah. Good, now can you stay tall as you go into your twist? Oh, 
Press out to twist. There you go. Now focus on staying up and forward in your twist. Up and forward. Up and forward. Like somebody's pulling on my front arm. What? Like if you, I'm imagining you're standing and pulling on my arm on the, this one. The yeah. Arm. Yeah. Right? Almost like there's a spring attached to your hands and your legs. Yes. Good. Can I go parallel here? Um, hold on, hold on. What did you say? I was stretching forward, so I said, can I go my feet parallel? Um, not for you, right? Because you're working on keeping the wrap of your hips. No, just at the end for the stretching. Over my Sorry, hold on, my gardener. Um, no, for you, because you're working on keeping that wrap of your hips, for you, everything is in Pilates stance right now. For now. Okay. Knee stretches. Oh, I didn't do the frog and leg circles yet. Come up to my shoulders. So Rona, when you go back, what shape do you want to be in? Round. Round, yes. So see if you can use your lower body reach in a way that helps you stay round, just like you did in your spine stretch forward. The headdress is down. No. The headdress will be up for your frog and leg circles. Thank you. So Rona, for this one, keep your arms by your sides because eventually your hands would be behind your hips, lifting your hips up higher. Like you become your own personal, yeah, exactly like that. One day you become like your own personal spine corrector. But in this position, similar to when we're laying on the reformer, how can you use your upper body reach, anchoring of your hands, your arms, your upper shoulders into the mat in a way that helps stabilize you and lengthen you when you come down? Actually, it brings it back to exactly what you were working on at the wall, right, when you started with your reverse wall. And Hilda has that same work here. How can you find your upper body reach 
And to me, the place that we're losing is the very top of your shoulder. It's very top of your arm and into your shoulder. Yes, yes. If you can get wider across your shoulder blades, that will help you keep your upper body reach connection all the way through your back and into your arms. I swear Zoom changes every time I'm on it. The way to get from one person to the other. It's an ever evolving platform. Now, Rona, can you reach your right leg a little bit longer? especially when you twist to the right. Can you push through your right leg to help you grow taller? Very nice. And in and in Hilda in and 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 in. Good. Two way stretch into your shoulder blocks into your foot bar. Good. Beautiful. Good work. Okay, I gotta learn to listen to my body. <laughs> Thank you. Um, footwork. Or running, running. Yeah, tell that. Running and pelvic. Okay, so Rona, I see you using this trick of lengthening your hip with your arm, right, to help you find your lower body reach and the length in your waist. Now, now that you've found it, because I can tell that you have, what if you take your hand back to the ground, like a kickstand, and can you still find that same lower body reach all the way, lengthening out your back through your seat, through your leg and out your foot? Yeah, I think that looks pretty long and strong. <laughs> Hilda, can you come up one more time? And I want you to find more upper body reach like you did in your frog and leg circles. There you go. And reach your head away from your feet and your feet away from your head to stretch yourself two directions. This is such a great place to find your two-way stretch. Right. And can you hold on to the two-way stretch all the way back in? You press out to find it. And then keep reaching your head away from your feet and your feet away from your head like you were working on in your long stretch. Now your head has feedback, right? Use the feedback of the headrest to help you find even more length in your upper body reach out through your neck, out through your head. The 
This was so good. Good. It looked like it felt really good. Or issue coming up today again on the right side. You're this feeling way. that's the sciatica? Yeah, I think that the two way stretch helped me out to alleviate that. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think I'm thinking where we should go next is to a barrel, either the small barrel or the spine corrector. Okay. Um, how about the ladder barrel? I want to go to a, to the small barrel. Yeah, you could definitely go to the ladder barrel, but just um, because Rona has a spine corrector at home, that way we can all do the same thing. Is that okay? Yes, yes, of course. Okay, cool. So Rona, when you're done with, once you're even with your sidekicks, why don't you finish with a little seal and then we'll come to the barrel together. So um, Rona, you can finish your mat work with the seal and then we're gonna come to the oh. spine corrector. So Hilda, Remember last week in teacher training, we did kind of a little evaluation on how do we to choose which hump is the right hump for you? Remember that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna ping, let's see if I remove Rona, then we'll have only Hilda. So Hilda, grab the, the small barrel too, so you have one on one mat and one on the other mat. Okay, very nice. And then can you come over here and just bring the computer screen down a little bit so we can see you? Just like the top of the screen, can you move it down? Oh yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go close the door if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah go for it. Hope they, they see it's working. Yeah, go for it, go for it. Okay, so the, I'm, this is probably a refresher for most of us, but um, we, between the small barrel and the spine corrector, we have three choices of humps for the arm series. And I, we're gonna work through the arm series um, to help Hilda find a more upper body reach connection through her neck and her head um, because two things. A, that was something we noticed. And if you go back through the recording and watch her move, you might notice that as well, that that was a part of her upper body reach. She was having trouble finding. And also because the whole body is connected that sometimes if we have pain and discomfort in the lower body reach, if we can find more length and strength in the upper body reach, it might help to, to stretch and lengthen that lower body's strain that you're feeling, right? Your sciatica strain is in your hip through your leg. But if we can find the lift and the length through the upper body reach, you know, without directly focusing on where she's feeling the pain, we can help to alleviate that by pulling out of it, getting more length up and out. So Hilda, you're going to go through the steps we went through on Saturday to decide which of these three humps is best for you today. So in an ideal world, and this is for the upper body, right? From the head to the tail. So in an ideal world, oh, we lost. Oh, we lost Hilda. Okay, so here, let's go to Rona. How do I go to Rona? Oh, there she is, okay. So Rona only has one option, but it actually is the best option for her. In fact, actually upstairs, she has a second spine corrector, but in an ideal world, when you get into position to set up for the arm series, you want everything from head to tail long and connected. So I think she's done a pretty good job finding that. The one thing I would say, Rona, is that 
and, and this is always one of your points of work, right? Your work to get your neck long. Are you able to get the back of your neck a little bit longer while still keeping your head connected to the barrel? Do you have to move your position in order to do that? Yes. So the back, to get the back of your neck longer, I want you to bring, yeah, so to me, that looks like the back of your neck just got shorter and the front of your neck got longer. Can you bring your chin in a little bit to help get the back of your neck longer? Yes, yeah. okay. So now that your work is how can you hold on to that as you go through these exercises? So I love the spine corrector for finding our two-way stretch because it provides feedback for the entire spine. The entire spine is supported in this arched shape so that as we're moving, we can really feel if we lose any piece of that connection. So as Rona's arms go back, her center has to get stronger to maintain the connection from her back pockets all the way up her back out of her head, out of her arms and into those weights. And she, in theory, can feel if one side of her back is working more than the other, if there's parts of her spine that want to come away from the barrel. And that's why it's called the spine corrector. Helps us to correct imbalances of the spine. And then as she goes into this one, the asymmetry of the arms, right, can show a bias of side bend in the spine one way or the other. Is she able to maintain her frame without side bending, keeping square in the shoulders and the hips with the asymmetrical action of the arms? Okay, very nice, Rena. So when you're done, come on up to your counter stretch. To what stretch? Come up and do your, your, remember we said the last exercise of the arm series for you is going to be the roll up to remind you to come up and do your counter stretch. <laughs> stretch forward, counter stretch your back. Okay. Okay. Let's see. I think we got Hilda back. So before, Rona, before you go into position two, let's just pause for a moment. We're going to go to Hilda and, um, and review how we choose, if we had all the options, how do we choose which hump is best? So... If the goal of the spine corrector is to have the entire spine supported from head to tail, Hilda's gonna go through the three options she has at her disposal. This being the smallest hump sitting in the seat on top of the spine corrector. And she's gonna see, can she get her head to touch while also keeping her tail connected and length all the way throughout. So that's option one. No. no. This is too tall for me today. Too tall. It's like the three little bears, right? <laughs> okay, so why don't you go over to the small barrel and see how that is? So in size order, we're now at the at mama bear at the middle at the middle option. This is better. 
This is better, okay? You're able to connect your head, which you weren't on the first. Do you feel like you can find your two-way stretch here and keep your whole spine connected to the barrel? Yeah. Okay, good. So this might be the right choice, but let's show, let's look at the third one just to be sure. Which is the third one? The third one is sitting um, on the back side of the spine corrector, that really tall hump. Oh yeah, I forgot. You remember this one? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is option three. Well, obviously this is the tallest. This is it's a big, it's a big curve, but that might that might be good, right? In order to find length, some people might need a longer, bigger curve. What do you think for today? So, One more time. Maybe this is the taller is the photo. People who have a longer torso. It could be. Yeah, it could be better for people with a longer torso. But I mean, it. who knows, right? You have to kind of give them all a try to figure out what's best for you. So what do you think today? Which one felt like you were able to find more length in your upper body reach? That one, two. Okay, perfect. So go on over there and you're going to do your arm series. You get set up and Rona is going to get set up for her leg series. Where are the weights? In the little basket behind you next to the wall. Turn around. Yeah. Okay, so as Rona is getting into position two, as we call it, the leg series position, she has the same goal. Can she get her whole spine connected to something with as much length and space as possible? Cool. So actually this is kind of fun to watch both of these series happening at the same time because Rona is anchored to the barrel with her upper body reach. That's her stability. So her lower body reach can move. And Hilda is anchored to the ground with her lower body reach and her upper body reach is moving. So go ahead, go through your series and we'll take a look at how the barrel can help us with the two-way stretch. So Hilda, the one other thing I want you to find is, is keeping your knees bent and your feet planted or keeping your legs straight gonna help you find more lower body reach? The lower body reach, uh, but it's straight. With them straight? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So we always have those two options. And I just want everyone to get into the habit of not making a rule, right? Because Everybody's different, including our own from day to day. So if we just decide, oh, every time I come to the small barrel, I'm gonna do, every time I come to the barrels to do the arm series, I'm gonna do the small barrel with my legs straight, then we're kind of doing ourselves a disservice because we have so many options. You wanna really make sure you find the best option for your body today. So let's see, let's do the, the dual spotlight so we can watch the upper body and the lower body reach working together. So Rona's challenge is as her lower body reach gets further away from her, her center has to get stronger and stronger and stronger to keep it connected. And as Hilda's upper body reach gets up and back and further away from her, her center has to get stronger and stronger and stronger to keep it connected. And for Hilda, that strength comes from the rib cage connection, right? Because that's the part of her body that wants to come away. And for Rona, it's that low belly scooping in and up to make sure her mid back stays connected in the leg series.
So I really love, Tilda, how even as you were transitioning to your counter stretch, you used the feedback of the barrel to help connect to each part of your spine. That was really beautiful. Good work. Yay. I know you've been working on that. Yes. Okay, cool. So we have a couple minutes left. And um, I think that we should finish at the wall, which is where Rona started. And I'll, I'll keep Hilda pinned just because she has a wider camera angle so we can kind of get a better look at what she's doing at the wall. Why don't you, Hilda, can you actually shoot the camera across to the wall over next to the tower? Just because we'll get a better view of you. There we go, good. Can you use that wall between the reformer and the tower? Okay, perfect. So, so now we're back on the wall, right? We've taken our, our reformer work and we've put it vertical. So find as much connection between head and tail as you can to this wall. And see, how can you use your lower body reach? How can you use the ground, pushing the ground away to help lengthen your back, right? Your lower body reach starts all the way at your shoulder blades. Can you lengthen all the way from your shoulder blades through your mid back, right? That's the tricky part for you. Through your low back, through your seat, through your hamstrings, through your shins, and into your feet. Now I just want to I just want to give a little a little insight into why I love the two way stretch so much because for Hilda right she's trying to access this middle part of her back and now I could tell her pull your ribs in pull your ribs in right and in theory that would kind of get the same result but I think that sh she knows she has to use her ribs to connect her lower body reach into the ground but it's such a more dynamic connected action if we think about it as the whole lower body reach rather than just one little piece of the puzzle which is the ribs because she could connect her ribs and lose the rest or lose the shoulders but if she thinks about it as this long energy it will help her to strengthen the weak part the mid back while keeping the whole body connected which is really the goal of pilates right everything to work as one so Keep working your lower body reach and reach your upper body reach forwards and upwards, especially out of your head and your neck, right? Like you were working on in your long stretch and your pelvic lift and reach your arms forwards and downwards. Good. So you're just gonna do that three times. It's kind of like what you did on the small barrel, right? Your, your arm series. But now you're doing it in a tall back instead of an arch back. Yeah. So I have a dialogue between bending my micro bending my knees and having my pin my uh, heels down to the floor. There's okay. There's a tug of war going in there. There's a tug of war because so so why why are you wanting to micro? I mean. You personally, I know we've heard this term many times, microbend the knees. So why why are you wanting to microbend your knees? What is that helping you to accomplish? It's just a fear. I don't know. So I just leave them straight. So okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer your question in a way that might not answer your question, but hopefully it does in the long <laughs> run. Okay. So just like the ribs, right? If your brain, if you're not thinking about the lower body reach as a whole long entity, and instead your brain goes to just one little tiny piece of the puzzle, the knees, right? Then to me, you're taking your focus away from what matters most, which is staying connected to your center. So I want you to do whatever helps you to keep the action of pushing your feet into the ground, connected all the way up your shins, up your thighs, through your seat, through your back and into the wall. And hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, 
So now okay. I feel like a mermaid, you know? Beautiful. Beautiful. I want to feel like a mermaid. How do you reach? It's like a, just a fin. It's like a fin. I love that. That's such a beautiful analogy. Uh-huh. Okay. So there you go. So now with your beautiful fin connected to the ground, see if you can use your fin to help you get lighter and stronger as you reach your arms up and back down. Good. And one more time. Very nice. Okay, now do the roll down, peeling away one bone at a time as you continue to push your fin long and strong into the ground. Good, two more times. Very nice. Good, and step away. Beautiful work today, ladies. Thank yeah. you all thank so you. much. Uh, thank you, Daniela. Uh, yeah, this morning I was so excited with watching all the videos that you sent me and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. Uh, Pilates is certainly a very humbling experience. <laughs> <laughs> It is. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I agree. Well, hopefully today we got a little bit more insight into our two-way stretch and it gives us something to focus on as we're working out this next week. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. You too. Bye. 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 Keep up. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>